Hello guys, so we're back again and welcome to another vlog. And so for today's video, we will be talking about the request that you've been asking for a long time and that is on how to read wiring diagrams. So I don't want to go to a much complicated wiring diagrams where everything will be boring and everyone will get lost. So I believe that we will start first from a simple reading of wiring diagrams and then we will do it in actual troubleshooting. As you may have noticed on all my videos, I'm doing the actual troubleshooting. So little by little, I'm incorporating the reading of wiring diagrams so that I can share it with you guys, my, my techniques on how to read wiring diagrams, which manual to search and where to start when you have that uh, trouble. So come and join me in this new vlog. So for the first video, this is about our bridge watch monitoring system. So we have a problem and it appeared on the BWMS, the alarm which is the autopilot power fail. So where to start and how will we uh, check this kind of alarm? If it is a bridge watch monitoring panel. Most of you guys maybe will search on the BWMS manual. And since the alarm in there is autopilot, power fail, uh, some will check the autopilot uh, manual. But for me, I will not start on checking those two manuals. But since these two are located into our bridge control console, and then I will start checking the bridge control console manual so that I can find the link between the bridge watch monitoring system and the autopilot why we are having this kind of alarm. It is an autopilot alarm and it is appearing on our bridge watch monitoring system. So let's start checking the bridge control console manual. So I checked the bridge control console manual and then I have checked it where I can find the autopilot power fail and under the bridge watch monitoring system I have found this autopilot power fail so this is the alarm which appeared on to our BWMS bridge watch monitoring system and it is connected to the 140141 di number 14 and it goes to the 740 741 terminal block of the 3 t1 terminal block and this goes to the autopilot but to focus on to this one i have decided to remove the connection first from one from the 140 and 141 so I disconnect the cable from DI14 which is on the terminal 140 and 141 cable 740-741 of the IO module and check whether autopilot power fail alarm appeared or will disappear after disconnecting the cable from 140 and 141 the autopilot power fail disappeared onto our bridge watch monitoring system panel. So what does that mean? To analyze it further, after removing the cables 740 and 741, I am going to short circuit the 140 and 141 and see what will happen after putting a bridge cable into this one as I believe this is just for switching the IO module is being used for switching so I will put bridge cables onto 140 and 141 and
So the autopilot power fail alarm appeared again after putting bridge onto the terminal 140 and 141. And then notice the DI-14 indication light as I believe if I will put jumper cable on 140 and 141, the LED of DI-14 should also be on. So I kept the 740 and 741 cables disconnected and we requested for the service technician to change the I.O. module. Same, huh? Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good thing that we are on the Asia side, so the technician is available in Korea and he changed the I.O. module and everything went well. So the PWMS is working fine now and the next video is about the troubleshooting I did in one of the engine room workshop uh, equipment. It's just a simple uh, wiring diagram, tracing and troubleshooting. I hope it will help the first time electrician or the cadets who are on board. So the same troubleshooting technique that I always been doing, I always start from the supply voltage, which is the RST. And then I will move to the input and output of the F1, F2, and F3 fuses. Since we have 440 into the F1, F2, F3, then we will move to the transformer. We should measure the terminal 1 and 2 of the input of the transformer side and we should be getting 440 volts. And then, of course, we need to measure the output voltage of the transformer. In which it is written in the nameplate that it is 24 volts AC. And since we're having 24 volts on the terminal 4 and 7, then we need to move to 4 and 8 to check the F4 fuse. And after checking, we found out that the fuse is okay. Then we need to move further, which is to measure the terminal 5 and 9. Since this is a live circuit and the access is very difficult on the 5 and 9, I have decided to move on to the number 6 and 10 terminal. In which we should be getting 24 volts. And since we're getting 24 volts onto the terminal 6 and 10, then we need to check the terminal 6 and 11. And voila, there is no 24 volts on the 6 and 10, which only means that the limit switch is in open position. So we need to further check this limit switch if we can still fix it or not. This is part of the safety system of this equipment whenever you are cutting something. 
So I have decided to switch off the unit and check the condition of the limit switch. So I have decided to measure the resistance of the limit switch. In which I have found out a poor conductivity. To thoroughly check the equipment if only the limit switch is the problem, I have decided to bridge the limit switch and test it. If it will run after this, it only means that this is the only problem. After the equipment run, then I need to dismantle the limit switch and see if I can still fix the contact. After fixing the contacts, then I have decided to check if it is calibrated well. So that's it guys. I hope you learned something from this video and please do not forget to hit the subscribe button for more ETO updates. Thank you.